This was the first time I ever met Josh. He's adopted from Hong Kong and he has Down syndrome and autism. He is the light of my family and the reason I am who I am today. I could not imagine my life without him. Since our lives began together, all I've ever wanted to do was protect Josh. He is always with a smile and a laugh, and he can turn around anyone's day with a hug. I consider myself lucky to have a brother like Josh, and I actually am lucky. I mean, statistically wise. You see, Josh and other children with Down syndrome are aborted at rates of over 90%. With Joshua, we had his social worker actually escort him home. And Joshua was, you know, abandoned at birth, um, left at a hospital. Hey, Jess. Jess. We went to the Republic of Georgia together. We had the both appear in court, and the judge, um, in their own language, kept asking us through their interpreter, why do you want to adopt this child? And he kept saying, why? And why would you? Why would you go all the way across the world to adopt a child with Down syndrome? We saw that uh, all the typical kids had parents lining up to adopt them, but then all the special needs kids, of course, nobody wanted it. They were just left waiting and waiting. Uh, and, that, and that just burdened our heart. I don't know why I feel this way. I don't know why I'm burdened. When, when, when we were faced with that situation, that all these special needs kids were waiting for families. I don't know why I felt that way. It's the Lord. He, he just, we were compelled. There was nothing else we could do. Mm. There was nothing else I could do. I just had to. Right. He, he, I just had to. That's right. all I knew. I just had to. Because they couldn't understand why you would adopt a child like her. Why in all the world would you come all the way across the world to get someone who we think is basically, basically worthless? Um, and so we tried to show pictures of Joshua that we already adopted a child and we were in court for so long just trying to convince the judge that she was a viable human being and she had value. This sentiment is carried across the families. All three families said similar things to me. They felt compelled. They all felt like it was the Lord calling on them. And they all happened to be Christian believers. We saw this couple that had what we could see is being around that community, the two children that had Down syndrome. And I approached them after the service and um, tactfully asked Ron if these children were adopted because mentally I was thinking to myself, their chance of them being biological is like zero. And he said, yes, they were adopted. So we, have, we, we had seen a family or we saw a family that actually had adopted uh, Down syndrome children. And out of that meeting, a circle of five families arose, connected through their faith and their shared passion of adoption of the less fortunate. So, when did you guys first get involved with other families that adopted, and specifically other families that adopted with Down syndrome? Oh my gosh, who did we meet first? Oh, huh? Okay. It was probably your parents, because I think we met them before. Well, they just had Lauren. And then we met them, and then I don't know if we knew other families that. Wait, so yeah, we first we met your mom and dad. <laughs> you know the story how we met at church. It was awesome. I do know, yeah, you guys. I don't dad, know the whole story though. I just know well, you met at church. Well, so we we were looking for a new church, and we walked in, and at the time we had Sammy was like three, and Jack was an infant in a car a car carrier, okay. but you could clearly see they have Down syndrome. Yeah. So we learned later that your dad said to your mom, "There's no way that's a coincidence. They adopted those kids," yeah. and then he said, "I'm gonna." get to know them or be friends with them or whatever. And so we, we visited that day. And then I went home and said, I'm totally making Kristen my friend, right? Because <laughs> I really love her. We ended up connecting with um, the Burroughs and the Neps yeah. and the Litskys. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of our circle for a while because it was wonderful to know other people who had done it. Right. Well, because the at the time it was really rare. Like now it's not, but at the time we were like. In 1976, it was done even less. Well, again, in 1976, when Donnie was born, we as a family knew absolutely nothing about Down syndrome. Right. There was very little information, and you didn't see that many. I mean, I couldn't even remember a Down syndrome child that I saw. And uh, he, he really enriched our lives, there's no question. 
I think that it's interesting too because his mom was very courageous in um, having Donnie grow up at home because the doctors advised her to put him in the institution. And that was what the popular belief was. And that's not even that long ago in our country that they basically said he'll have no, his life will be of no value. He'll be a burden on your family and he's not going to contribute anything to society. So for her to go against that and say, no, that's not right. And we're going to, you know, I'm going to treat him and love him just like my other two children was really kind of courageous for that time period. Even when, if you're carrying your own child, you don't know if you're going to have a baby with Down syndrome or special needs. And doctors pushed to uh, um, to abort these mm -hmm. children. Donnie was an awesome kid, and it was a a big addition to our family. He he opened up doors that we would have never been exposed to before. Donnie became the whole focus of our life. Mm -hmm. our, our lives revolved around Donnie. These people are pioneers. Some of the first families ever to go down this road of international Down syndrome adoption. My family alone, having adopted Josh, the first international Down syndrome adoption in the greater Delaware Valley, and my sister Taylor, being the first child with Down syndrome to be adopted out of the Republic of Georgia. These families, mine included, are the reason why change was made. So we're Ron and Connie leaving it. Well, we're Dean and Gwen now. We have nine children that we've adopted, and our oldest three have Down syndrome. Uh, we started out with Micah from Hong Kong. And Faith from Miami. And Mari from and Haiti. Mari's from Haiti, so we have an international group. It happened, and then and then that fall, like three months later, is when they had that major earthquake. Right, that right. devastated wow. that place. So we. We were in there in November to bring her home, and then that January, they had that horrendous. And you guys fostered right. Tess, right? The Lieberman's? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. I, I heard that. I heard that yeah. story. I was like, wow. Yeah. Like, that's that's a small world. I mean. That was the start of yeah. it all. The Nets had gotten connected to us because they had, um, they always fostered kids. And right. interestingly enough, they fostered Tessie, wow. our fourth oh, daughter. Wow. And before, we were that, with them before, before that, Bethany had, our agency had hooked us up and said, we have this couple who fostered for us. They're interested in adopting people That's or right. children with That's Down syndrome. Right. Could we connect the two of you? We're like, sure, right. absolutely. Yeah. And so then we got to know them, became friendly. And then as it turned out, we had been matched with Tessie, but she had to go in foster care before everything was finalized. Her, yeah. And they said, oh, we just had a little girl placed with us. Mm -hmm. And we're like, we think that's our daughter. The, the message to the world. Yeah is that, is that uh, we all have a handicap. You have one, mm. we have one. Everyone in the world has a handicap. But, but we still deserve a chance at this life where it's not for us to, to give and take life. It's just not, not for us to do it. And, they, and you know, we're, we're all with, with a defect. So, so with Christ, we can be cleaned up and live a good life. I remember when our youngest, um, we adopted a sibling group of three, which is the last one. And I remember when we were in the process of visiting with them, Sanaya, we were walking in the park and Jack was walking and I don't think she'd ever seen a person with Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. And she looked and she was like, what is going on? Like you could tell what was going mm -hmm. on in her head. She was probably about five or six at the time. Um, so I said to either Grace or Tess, hey, go explain what Down syndrome is to them. And she was like, oh, okay. And like kids are natural, like kids are more welcome and readily accept. Okay, oh, it's just different. I think for adults, if you've gone through your life and you've never done that um, or never experienced it, mm -hmm. but I think once you do, it's like, oh, like even like Connie said, our neighbors, like Jack just, mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. this is kind of cool. Next birth parents, um, dad was a Marine. Yeah, yeah. And they moved around a lot and they actually have an older daughter and they have a younger son after him. And um, and they just like they just felt like it was their lifestyle was too much to handle right. and so on and so forth. And it was funny because Connie's family's reaction was, "How could they give him up?" And but like I felt like saying to them, "Listen, I'm so happy because we get him, mm -hmm. and 
they didn't abort him. And he gets a better life. You know, yeah. so yeah. like they did the right thing. Probably what every parent of a child with Down syndrome wants is just for people to realize that they're they're whole, complete people with mm -hmm. personalities and mm -hmm. interests and desires and plans and goals, just like everybody else, right? Just yeah. to have them embraced. I suppose they have so much to offer. They're such a blessing. Like mm -hmm. it's amazing. Like I feel like in our society, like. You, you contribute if you're working 40 hours a week and making money and doing things, but they, they contribute to the welfare of other people and they, and they just make the world a better place. I think people just don't realize, like you were saying, like they're such a blessing. People don't realize what they, what they contribute just by their mere existence, you know, um, the way that they impact people in such a wonderful way. So I guess I just wish people would just realize their value like, for example, we have neighbors who have said to me, because Jack will stay out front and he'll just wave to everybody mm -hmm. in the morning. And he's there every morning. And I've had neighbors come up to me and say, he's such a blessing. Like, he makes my day. Mm -hmm. Because when they pass by to go to work, he's there waving to mm -hmm. them. So even, like, just little things like that uplift people, you know? And that's amazing that he's mm -hmm. having that impact on these, these grown people in our neighborhood. Yeah. It's, it's good stuff. It is, yeah. yeah. We did them a favor. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. However, we are not done yet. This fight is not over. There are still issues with how people with Down syndrome and other special needs are treated and viewed, and it breaks my heart. I think the biggest problem for me is when people, you know, say, oh, there's something wrong with that person. What's, what's wrong? What if they're right and we're the ones that's wrong? What, gets, what gives you the power to say, they don't have a right yeah. to live because there's something yeah. wrong with because, them. Because of what you deem as normal yeah. is, is not necessarily normal. These are some of the best people I've ever met in my life and, and you're telling me they're wrong. Right. And it's... The neat thing about them is they're not judging. There was like a special needs floor. I mean, I remember leaving just being in tears because it was yeah. in the basement and kids that had severe special needs were like in dark rooms and just left laying on beds and it was just horrifying. I've been in, I've been in situations in school where, you know, I've, I've seen kids making fun of people <laughs> with disabilities, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and you know, that yeah. doesn't work for me. That well, doesn't work for me. Something like, because I work in a school, so like when kids use the word retard. Mm. All like, the time, they, I'm it's like, a buzzword in I'm my like, college. All right, I bring them to my office, right. <laughs> I show them pictures, I said, Here's why this word isn't okay with me right, because right. and but to me, I don't think people even think about no. what they're saying. That's just a word that has a negative connotation. Like they don't pair it with a person, so I try to pair it with a mm -hmm. person for them. Friends of our kids now, there's very few and far between. You, you find a rare, a rare child that takes an interest right. in in showing friendship right. to our kids. So it's kind of sad in that respect. Uh, our daughter, we have a neighbor, our daughter calls her her best friend, but she pays no attention to her whatsoever. She, she's done it, you know, here and there. They, she's come over here to play occasionally for an hour or so. That's all it took to, to be considered her best friend. But And even, you know, one of the people that I work with at school, um, he has, he's a father of six and his last son was born with Down syndrome. And it was funny, he came to talk to me and, and just kind of, and he had a great attitude about it, but he just needed to talk to someone who yeah. lived in that role. And he's like, and you see him talk about his son, Joey, now. He's like, he's awesome, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I warned him, I said, he's gonna be your favorite out of all of your <laughs> They're just amazing, special people. They're, they're our fun. favorite people on the earth. They are fun. They are we fun. feel like they're the best people on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> like, just in general, like, just people with Down syndrome are the best people on the planet. Yeah. They just are, right? I don't know. And so, and so we do, I do have one regret, mm -hmm. one, one, one regret, and that's that, that we didn't start soon enough.